everyone in YouTube land, Atari Leaf back again with a pickup video. Ready, set, let's go. First is a little item I actually found in the garbage at work. A plug and play full of Commodore 64 games. Never seen one of these before. I'm in construction and people love to use the big construction bins to dump household junk. And as I was tossing some broken 2x4s in, I noticed a smashed original Xbox and busted controllers. But also this plug and play which works great. Some of the games I recognize like Jumpman Jr., Pit Stop, and Impossible Mission, but others like Cybernoid I've never heard of. See, although I didn't own a Commodore 64 personally growing up, I did use one in school, and we did spend quite a bit of time playing games, but that was a very long time ago. This is a really cool little plug and play, and it's got some great games on it that I'm really enjoying, so glad I found this, and the price was certainly right. I guess I'll have to go dumpster diving more often. Okay, now on to the one Wii game I picked up. Madagascar Karts. Yes, it's another ripoff of Mario Kart, this time using the characters from the Madagascar movies, as well as other characters like Shrek and Monsters vs. Aliens. Is it great? No. It was only $4.99 at cash converters, and my wife and daughter enjoy it, so that made it worthwhile. It's not bad, but I really don't like using the Wii motion controller as a steering wheel. I'm old school. I'm pretty sure you can use the Wii Classic controller, and that's something I'd still like to pick up one of these days. The game features the requisite wacky power-ups and a nice variety of tracks. Racing games are one of my favorite genres, and I do love the kart-style games, but this one falls in the middle of the pack. It's not great, but not terrible. Now on to the GameCube. Picked up the original Burnout for $1.99 at the same cash converters. It's a game that I'll admit I've never played. I think I might have rented the original Xbox version many years ago, but I can't be sure. It's a fun game to be sure, and it seems you gain points by actually causing accidents. The cars handle great, and the tracks are varied and interesting. Oh look! I pushed a red pickup into an oncoming city bus. Those poor digital people just wanted to get to their jobs. Oh, the humanities! Oh well, I'm sure there'll be a digital resurrection the next time I play, so I'm not too worried. Really fun game though, and for a buck ninety-nine, I certainly can't complain. You know, I have a total of four GameCube games, and they're all racing games. I'm sensing a theme here. Okay, let's look at some GBA games. First we have Backyard Hockey. Got this at the local game store, and I think it was only a couple of bucks, if I remember correctly. I've been looking for a decent version of hockey for the GBA, but have yet to find any of the EA series. Although from what I've researched, they only really made NHL 2002 and perhaps one of the hits games for the GBA. So I set my sights a little lower and picked up this title. All 30 NHL teams are represented with a handful of real NHL players like Mike Modano or Curtis Joseph, but most of the players are generic schoolyard kids, and like a schoolyard game, you and the computer take turns picking players each with a breakdown of their various skill levels. The game features three-on-three -three action, which is fairly tight and enjoyable. There are also various power-ups, but I'm not exactly sure what they do. Not a bad little hockey game for the GBA, but I'd still like to find one of the actual NHL games. Next we have a pool game called Archer McLean's 3D Pool. This is a pretty impressive little pool game for the GBA, which features both UK and US versions of 8-ball as well as 9-ball. The controls can take some getting used to, but once you do, it works really well. The physics, which are very important in a pool game, are also very well done. And there's a nice variety of computer opponents with varying skill levels to play against. This game reminds me a lot of an old DOS pool game I used to love called Sharky's 3D Pool. Archer McLean has the same look and feel to it, and I really enjoy it. Like pinball, pool is another game in the sports slash simulation genre that I've always been fond of. Pick this up CIB from the game store with trading credit, so no cash spent, which is a bonus for a cheap game collector like me. The final GBA game is Iridian 3D. If you recall in my last pickups video, I acquired Iridian 2, which is the sequel to Iridian 3D. However, where Iridian 2 is a standard vertically scrolling shmup, Iridian 3D is more of a rail shooter with a kind of space harrier or even Star Fox feel to it. The game has beautiful graphics, sound, and music. I don't like it quite as much as Iridian 2, but it is still a very fun game, and I've enjoyed playing it. I got this copy from local collector Bretsky in a trade, who I've shouted out recently, so thanks, Brett. 
Got one Game Boy Color game, and guess what? It's another retro arcade remake, the classic Space Invaders. Yes, I have about a million different versions of Space Invaders, but the reason is that they're so darn fun, and this one is no exception. You choose from three different ships with different abilities, and have it the monsters from another planet with various power-ups to help you defeat the alien nasties. Again, great graphics and sound, although I found the music on this one a little annoying, but that's a minor complaint. Otherwise, it's a very solid version of Space Invaders that's a lot of fun to play. I think this was a couple of bucks on eBay, plus shipping, so I'm happy with it. Now on to the NES. Yes, I've actually been picking up a few that I regretted getting rid of, starting with Slalom, which was an eBay purchase with some PayPal funds. I was reminded of this one after watching a video by Kit171. Skiing is very akin to a racing game, so again, with that theme. Hey, by the way, what is it with the skin-tight outfit on this skier? A skier and a skin-tight bodysuit, it reminds me of something. Stupid sexy Flanders! Oh yeah, thanks Homer. Stupid sexy Flanders. So yeah, Slalom, glad I got this one back. It really plays well. I like those original Black Label NES games. Also in that same PayPal lot was Dig Dug 2, another one I used to have and a not quite as well-known sequel to the classic Dig Dug. The first game had you digging underground, but this one takes place on the surface on islands. You not only have the classic pump as a weapon against the pukas and Fygars, but you have a jackhammer as well, which you can use on the scattered holes or spots scattered throughout each island to send large chunks of the island into the ocean and enemies, any enemies along with it. And if you're not careful yourself as well. A very fun sequel that doesn't quite capture the charm of the original, but it's an entertaining game in its own right. Next we have Excite Bike, one of two games gifted to me by Jesbo Vi Oh no, game glitches! <sighs> That's better. As I was saying, this was gifted to me by Jesbovision, the other Jeremy in town, so thanks Jeremy. So Excite Bike is a gasp racing game. Hey, there's more too. I think everyone is pretty familiar with this one. You control a motorcycle while jumping ramps while avoiding overheating your bike and trying to get the best score possible. An option to design your own tracks is a nice feature, although there's no option to save your tracks, as Excite Bike was released before battery saves were a more common feature. The other game gifted to me by Jesbo Vision was Rad Racer. If you're a fan of the outrun style of arcade racing games, like me, then Rad Racer is right up your alley. This game has a very cool feature that, when you press select, allows you to play the game in 3D with glasses that apparently came with the game when it was initially released. I've yet to try this feature. I'd need to find a pair of those glasses. I'm not sure if the kind you get in theaters nowadays would work or not. If someone could let me know, that would be great. Because there's some great movies coming out this summer that I'll probably go see in 3D anyway, or I'll track down a pair of those old corny red and blue glasses somewhere. Anyway, getting off track, great NES game. Glad I got it back in the collection, so thanks again, Jez. Speaking of Rad Racer, I actually went yard sailing a couple of weeks ago. First time in a year, probably, and actually found a box copy of Rad Racer 2 with the instructions, sleeve, and even that little white foamy bit in the bottom. That foamy bit puts it up over the top for me. Forget the game, I love that little foamy bit. And it was only a buck. Not bad for a foamy bit with a boxed Nintendo game to go with it. I actually like this version of Rad Racer a little better than the original Rad Racer, but just a bit. Hard to explain, but it seems to control a little better and it seems a little more forgiving. Great, 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 great game, and you can't beat the price, and I don't know how to talk anymore. The final Nintendo game is Arkanoid. Got this one off of eBay. I'm a big fan of the Arkanoid Breakout series of games, and this is one I've wanted for quite a while. The only problem with the NES version of the game is that you really need a paddle style controller to play it. The default gamepad moves a little too slow and in later levels makes the game almost impossible to play. The game itself looks, sounds and feels like the arcade original and is a lot of fun to play. Again, without that special paddle controller the game is almost disappointing to play so thankfully in the same auction I snagged the actual Voss controller. See what I did there? I made it look like I didn't actually have a Voss controller, and then BAM! I pull one out at the end. Special thanks to Pook Ninja 3 for his help. See, the Arkanoid and Voss controller, which I used PayPal funds to buy, was being sold in the US only. So I contacted Pook Ninja 3, and he graciously helped me by hitting the Buy It Now, having it shipped to him in the US, and then shipping the package to me here in Canada. So thanks again, Brian, for all your help. Awesome of you.
have a backup Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101. It's the backlit version. It's the same light metallic blue as the other GBA I've got, so nothing new, but it works great, sounds great, and plays the same great games from the incredible Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance library. This one technically didn't cost me anything, as I used store credit with GameCycle, and got this at the same time as Backyard Hockey for the GBA. Gotta love store credit. Now you may remember a video I made a while back where I was lamenting the apparent death of my Sega Master System. Well, another local collector saw that video where I was also pining for a power-based converter. So after some back and forth for a month or so, we settled on 20 bucks, two black Tandy Coco joysticks, and a copy of Color Baseball, which I had readily available. Now I can play Master System's versions of Rampage and Outrun, so very happy about that. Glad to finally get a power-based converter back in the collection. Well, that's about it. Also picked up a spare GameCube controller and a sealed Yobo GBA car adapter. Nothing exciting about either, but they were only a couple bucks each. So, this ends the latest chapter in my exciting, heart-stopping series of pickup videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see you. Stop pressuring me! Stupid sexy Flanders!